Hi, I want to talk today about uh, branch circuit demand loading, uh, more specifically about continuous loading on branch circuits. Uh, so we know that if we have a electrical load connected to a circuit and it is running continuously all the time running or even most often running, it's going to produce a lot of heat and that heat has to go somewhere. So we don't want it to melt the wire or harm the overcurrent device at all. So we're going to talk about what we would do in a situation where we have a continuous load. Now there's a couple important places in the codebook that we need to go. So this question right here, we say we have a 65 amp, 240 volt load fed with TW75 copper conductors on 75 degree rated equipment. Uh, I want to know what the wire is for that load and I want to know what the overcurrent is for that load. Uh, so first place I want to start is 8104. Uh, sub rule three. Sub rule three basically just says uh, your load shall be considered a continuous load unless you can prove it's not. There's nothing here to prove it is not a continuous load based on not running more than one hour in any two hour period under 225 amps, right? So we assume this is a continuous load. So here we have to assume it's continuous. The next thing is I haven't mentioned uh, what the rating of the breaker is, whether it is a 100% continuous rated breaker or whether it's an 80% rated continuous breaker. We're going to assume the worst and we'll assume it's only an 80% rated continuous breaker, meaning if I have a continuous load, I can only load that breaker up to 80%. If that's the case, which we are saying it is here, 8104, sub rule 6 applies. It says where you have a fuse or a breaker rated at 80% continuous rating, you cannot exceed 80% the rating of the breaker. So our load cannot exceed 80% the rating of the breaker, which means we are going to have to upsize our breaker. And because our breaker protects our wire, we also need to upsize our wire so our breaker can still adequately protect that wire. So we kind of end up with a process. Now the process would be this. We start with our load, right? We take our load, we determine is it continuous or non-continuous. If it is non-continuous, it's easy. Because if it's a non-continuous load, it's not running all the time, it's not producing a lot of heat. We go all the way down, we size a wire, and we size an O, C easy, simple to do. However, if we have this continuous load, right? So a non-continuous load or a continuous load. And just remember, 8104 sub rule 3 tells us all loads shall be deemed continuous unless you're told they're not. What we have to do is if we have a 100% rated OC, that means the breaker can handle 100% continuous load all the time, no problem. Size your wire, good to go. Where it becomes an issue, which is probably the most common installation we will actually do in the field, is if you have 80% rated OC. And remember, it talks about this in 8104 sub rule 6. Uh, so, what that says is you need to then take your load, whatever it is, divide by 0 0.8, right? So that way, your load does not exceed 80% the rating of the wire, which means your load won't exceed 80% the rating of the breaker. Once you divide by 0.8, you take that number and you size your wire. Uh, so this is just a little flow chart that we can kind of follow to size these loads. So for this load right here, we'll do this as an example. I have 65 amps. We are saying this is continuous, and we are saying it is going to be an 80% OC, uh, 75 degree termination temperature. Uh, we'll assume it is, well, TW75 copper run in rigid steel conduit, not more than three conductors, not exceeding 30 degree ambient temperature. What we need to do, we have know our load, we've determined it's continuous, we said we're using 80% rated OC, we take our load, we divide it by 0 
right? That would be our demand factor in this case. We are upsizing our minimum ampacity to make sure we get a big enough wire to handle the extra heat. Gives us 81.25 amps. So this number right here is our minimum ampacity. What we do with that minimum ampacity is we take it to table two and we are going to use the 75 degree column. Table two tells us we are going to select the wire based on the 81.25 amps. Gives us a number four copper. Good for 80. Five amps. Fantastic. So that's how we would size the wire. Now, our next step after we have the wire would be to size the overcurrent device. So to size an OC, right, 14104, how we size overcurrent devices regularly, would apply 14104. Sub rule one in this case basically tells us what you want to do is you want to take your allowable ampacity to table 13. This number here, right, would be our allowable Capacity of the wire, take that to table 13. On table 13, there is not an 85 amp overcurrent available. Because there's not an 85 amp overcurrent available, we look at the ranges and we find out that we actually need on this wire a 90 amp overcurrent device, which is good. A 90 amp OC is set by code to protect our number four, good for 85 amps, which is definitely big enough for the 65 amp load. Uh, so this is what we do for continuous loading. Um, I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.